I personally think a cardinal sin of guitar playing is to ever claim that you are bored of playing a scale. What the problem really is, and I'm gonna give you a little tough love here, is that it's not the scale's fault, but it's that you've run out of ideas on how to use it. What's up, I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method, and today I'm gonna show you a multitude of uses that you can get out of a scale, namely the minor pentatonic scale, and show you that it's more than just a collection of notes that you can solo with. It's actually a great resource for writing riffs and fills and all kinds of stuff outside of soloing just to make jamming on guitar a hell of a lot more fun. Oh, and it's important that you stick around to the very end of the lesson because I've got a free gift for you and your guitar that you're both gonna love. Let's take the open E minor pentatonic scale as our example, like what I was doing in the beginning of the video, right? I was using everything within just this scale here. Open E string, third fret, open A, second fret, open D, second fret, open G, second fret, open B, third fret, open high E, third fret. So that's the open E minor pentatonic scale. And it's called the open E minor pentatonic scale because it's right here in the open position. So get this, not only is this a great skill to use just for soloing, it can give you a whole lot more than that. But the first thing you gotta understand is that that scale that we just went over is actually two scales, or rather the same scale twice. We got the first part of the E minor pentatonic in one octave, one, two, three, four, five, and then we have another octave of it, one, two, three, four, five, and then it continues on just so it can fill out the space with all six strings. We have the start of a third octave, but obviously it just stops right there with those two notes. So we have one scale, then the second scale, an octave up, and then two additional notes. It's all the same scale, but them being in different octaves can actually give us different sounds and make it feel a lot less repetitive, right? So one thing that I like to do is to actually segment this whole scale pattern here into three sections and kind of give them different roles. This is at least a great jumping off point to get you started with the whole like using the pentatonic scale for more than just soloing. So starting with this first chunk of the scale right here, we're gonna do the open E, third fret, open A, second fret, open D, second fret. So essentially the low octave of the scale with that additional upper octave here. I like to section off this part of the scale to use for riffs. And it's great for using like mean minor pentatonic riffs, you know, like. And I mean, there's so many great songs that come to mind that do the same thing, where it's like you're just using like the low timbre of those notes in the scale to actually give you something very cool and riffy. And especially in this open position, it's great for that. So if you wanna write a killer riff in E minor, you got all these great notes to work with and you can use whatever kind of rhythm or timing that you want. Personally, I like to start with uh, just a slow driving kind of blues, blues rock kind of rhythm. You know, it's like bonk, ga bonk, ga bonk, ga bonk, that kind of thing, right? So if I kind of have that in my head, how I would approach these notes is something like this, you know? So like, you know, that was just right off the cuff, just sort of what came to mind. Once I had that beat in my head, I just kind of ran with it. And I was just using notes within the scale. I wasn't trying to make it fancy. I wasn't trying to use too many embellishments because to get started with this, you can just start with the notes and give them a good rhythm, put some good timing to it and actually come up with something pretty kick ass. So we got that part for riffs. And then for another segment that I like to do, which is kind of this middle part here, we're just gonna be doing open D, second fret, open G, second fret. And this is great for little fills. So they're like little licks that you can throw in between, let's say notes in a riff or like power chords or open chords or what have you, but you can throw in those little uh, embellishments that sound really nice. Uh, and of course add some attitude, but they're not really full on solos. They're just cool little licks or fills, like I said. So you can do stuff like. You know, stuff like that. It's just like, it's a really simple little four note box. And you can have fun with it doing hammer-ons, you can do bends, pull-offs, that kind of stuff to just make it more interesting. But it works great when you're doing it in tandem. If I were to go back to that kind of slow driving blues rock kind of rhythm, you know. You know, and then threw in like a little more of a riff at the end. So, these can obviously blur together, but in the beginning, this is a good way to just 
to segment them out at first just to give them those respective roles so that you can start it can start jogging those ideas so you can start thinking like okay this is like riff territory this is you know little lick territory or uh, fill territory and then we have the rest of the scale pattern right we have um, open B third fret open high E third fret and then right here it's just great for doing solo stuff right so it's that upper register like So it's like this adding rhythm to it is, is huge because it kind of gives it a, a, the feel of a song. And what I'm doing is I'm just like, I was kind of blurring the lines towards the, uh, towards the end there, but you're just kind of hearing how like we got like these cool, like kind of riff ideas coming in the lower register. You got those fills that also kind of blur in with the solo ideas too. Cause you know, I don't want you to feel like you're limiting yourself to these specific boxes within the scale pattern, but I just want you to, in, in the beginning, assign those roles to them so that it can start jogging those musical ideas, like I said. And one thing that can really help is if you just throw on a drum loop or even just a metronome, something to just get your mind focused in on a beat, then you can kind of think in your head like what sort of rhythm you want to get with it. It doesn't have to be bluesy. It can be a little bit more, it can be country. It can be, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of places you can go with it. You can get funky, you know, just by changing the tempo, you can take the same exact scale and absolutely adapt it to a whole new vibe and you're going to be coming up with ideas that you otherwise wouldn't have. And it's going to be pretty exciting and pretty inspiring. And hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this lesson, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It'll really help us out and it'll let us know that you're digging these lessons and you'd like to see more of them. All right, now let's get back to it. So when you're trying this out, give yourself like three parts to write, essentially. Give yourself a riff, a fill, and let's say a solo, but it doesn't have to be like a lengthy solo. It can just be like a collection of licks. This Again, this is a good starting point for you just to get used to the idea of segmenting the scale out to give you these different musical ideas that could really all come together and create a song, a full, a whole song, you know? So if you were to give yourself just a handful of notes in that lower register for some riffs, you can keep it simple, you know? And what's also cool too, like I was doing in the beginning, was I was incorporating power chords, you know? You know, so if I was doing like a low E power chord, I'm still staying within the scale because these are notes found right within the scale pattern. So I'm not cheating. I'm not venturing outside of it. These are all within the scale, which is what's awesome about it, you know? So what I was doing with this open E power chord, you got the low E open, then you have second fret on the B and the D strings. And there you go. That's your E power chord. And what's cool is that you can also go to the four chord, which is an A power chord here, to kind of keep this thing moving and make it feel like it's actually a chord progression rather than just soloing over one chord, right? So for that A power chord, it's the same deal as the E power chord. We're just bringing it down a string. So we have the open A string, then we have second fret on the uh, D string and the G string which are all notes within the scale pattern. Again, we're not having to cheat just to add these, you know, a, a little additional uh, um, things to make it more interesting. We're, we're all staying right within the neighborhood of that scale so that we can, you know, get the most out of it, you know? So you got those, those two power chords. So it's great. You can do something like this. You can do a little riff like... Where you're just doing like open low E, little blues bend on that third fret make it sound a little swampy and then hit that octave on the second fret of the D string and then just have that peppered in just between like kind of chugging open power chords and then you can throw in the four chord so as long as you're keeping that driving rhythm it'll continue to inspire more ideas like a lot of the stuff I'm coming up with I mean this wasn't really rehearsed this is just me trying to practice what I preach here, right? And show you that when you give yourself that pulse, that rhythm, that really inspires kind of where, what direction you want to go musically with it. And that's really what makes it fun because then you're not really aimlessly noodling. You know, you're not just, and you're not relying on like a backing track or anything like that. Like I got no backing right now, it's, it's just me. So I'm trying to keep that, that driving rhythm, that timing. So it's almost like I'm, I can feel a band playing along with what I'm doing 
And that's what continues to inspire the musical ideas, right? Like if I'm really excited about an idea like that, like I'll program a drum loop for it and like, you know, record some bass and like turn it into something cool. So in addition to that rhythm part, you know, we got that, those chugging power chords. You know, then you have this middle register here to use for licks. So you can do stuff like. Like, and, and I mean, again, all using just those four notes right here in this little box, right? Uh, open D, open G, and then second fret on D and G. So it's like, you know, doing some bends, you know, just classic blues rock kind of moves, right? And then also the trills, you know? Little things like that. Again, this is stuff that just kind of comes to mind for me, and it's obviously something that you can use too, but you don't, it doesn't have to be fancy, like I said. Even just do something like. Something like that, you know? Something like that, real simple, but if just by having that rhythm, that flow to it, you know, rhythmically, it's just like, it's really bringing it to life and it doesn't feel like you're just aimlessly noodling, like I said. And then of course, when you got the, the you know, like the top half of it here, for like the solo stuff, it's like one thing I like to do is once I'm like really in the zone and like in the pocket of that rhythm, I've been doing the riffs and the fills and stuff, then I want to bust into a solo, I'm still feeling that rhythm. And so I'll just sit there and just like. And something like that, right, just goes right back into it. So I wasn't trying to do anything super fancy. I was just trying to use the notes that I had available to me and just repeating licks, you do making double stops out of them, you know? You know, just doing all that kind of stuff. And like with like slides and pull-offs and all that, just like, you know, little guitar linguistics just to give it some, some attitude and make it feel fresh. But again, I'm staying within that scale pattern, the same exact scale pattern that you know, that you have access to, right, that we've gone over. And it's like, that, like, that's just to demonstrate how much mileage you can really get out of it. So now you can rest assured that the minor pentatonic scale is not something to get bored of. Because honestly, if you're to just switch up the rhythm, it'll inspire completely new musical ideas that will not just come in the form of solos, but in riffs and fills, as well as licks and solos. But one last thing I want to show you, it's not just applicable to the open E minor pentatonic scale. I picked that one because it sounds cool, right? It's in the open position. And frankly, it's easier to play because we only got to worry about fretting half the notes. But if let's say you wanted to apply this in a different location on the fretboard in a different key, let's say G minor pentatonic, for example. And you wanted to do the same thing we've been talking about, but now in this position, it would look something like this. So you just adapt to the new position and obviously your first finger is going to really come in handy to kind of help, uh, you know, bar the notes where necessary, you know, when you're dealing with this half of that pentatonic scale pattern. But it's ap absolutely the same, right? It all applies just like I showed you, you know, going for a very similar vibe that we've been talking about where you have the riffs in the lower register, you know, and then you got the fill area right here. Which of course, you know, also applies for the solos. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, again, uh, prevent you from using that for solos if it feels right, you know. But again, just to get you started with this whole idea. Like I said, this is just something to build the habit of having three times the amount of musical ideas that can come from the scale as opposed to just the one with soloing, right? And then of course with the... You know, just when you're using the, for the solo stuff. So, and then of course, eventually, as you get more comfortable with it, it'll all kind of blur together and you can create riffs and fills and licks in anywhere, you know, anywhere on the scale, but you're adapting this, you know, this applied rhythm to it, which is really, really the secret behind this whole thing is just inspiring actual music to come out. If you're giving rhythm and timing to it, it's not going to be aimless noodling that just kind of is directionless and is more the product of, 
you know, habitual finger movements rather than actual musical creation. So now that you have this powerful new way of approaching the minor pentatonic scale, I'm stoked to see what kind of musical ideas you come up with. But it doesn't have to stop there. What if I told you that there's a way that you can learn how to adapt this to any position on the fretboard in any musical key? It'd be pretty awesome, right? And I just so happen to have the very thing that's gonna get you there. And since you made it to the very end of the video, I gotta make good on my word and give you that free gift. Ta-da! This is it right here, the fretboard conveyor belt. This is a system that I've developed over years and years of fretboard frustration that's already helped thousands of guitar players online learn how to navigate the fretboard with ease and comfort. So be sure to click here to claim your free copy or check the link in the description box. I don't think you should ever be in a situation where you're bored with a scale. Because all it really takes is approaching things a little differently than you're used to to make things fresh and new again.